is the will of God that we should be in good health always and be healed of every infirmity. If you don't need healing, someone around you definitely might need it. This is your opportunity and for those sick around you to be connected to the teaching of God's word for healing. Don't forget, God's word is God's medicine. I prophesy as your amen will come like thunder, you will swim in the miraculous. Power City International presents Harvest of Healing, Miracles, Signs and Wonders, ministering Dr. Abel Daminer. Date 11th April to 18th April 2021. Time Monday to Saturday, 6 p.m. daily, and on Sunday, first service 8 a.m. and second service 11 a.m. GMT plus one, and a rebroadcast on the following radio stations. Radio Aquaibom 90.5 FM Uyo 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. XL FM 106.9 Uyo 3 p.m. Unio FM 100.7 Uyo 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Heritage Radio 104.9 Uyo, 10 p.m. till midnight daily and also on Kingdom Life Network Station. Also live on Facebook at Abel Damino Public Figure, YouTube Abel Damino Ministries International, Twitter Abel Damino and Instagram at Abel Damino Watch Real Time. Venue Power City International, number 98 Wangibo Road, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Host Doctors Abel and Rachel Daminer. Come on, one more time. Give the Lord a shout of praise. If you know that you're not going to remain the same again, jump up on your feet and give the Lord a shout. Woo! I don't know about you, but I believe the word of God. Hey, hallelujah.
and not the tail. You are above and not below. You are redeemed. Redeemed from sickness. Redeemed from death. Redeemed from sin. By the power of the Holy Ghost. It's your season to win. Take your healing. Take your freedom. Take your favor. Give the Lord a shot. Leader, Agaba Jokolo, the Brenda Kakoro to Sekele, the Brenda Kalata Bohodia, Engebo Zekia. Praise you, Father. Agaba Zokolo, the Brenda Kakala, the Boja Kele, and Mengele, the Bozotolo, the Brenda Hata. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we come humbly and respectfully before your holy word tonight. And we rejoice that we have access into the deep things of God by the Holy Ghost. Thank you for everyone in this service and everyone connected to the service tonight. Revelation knowledge is gifted us. Veils full of clarity comes. We declare that tonight doubt and unbelief totally terminated. Your people built up, equipped, edified. And by the end of this service, Jesus is glorified. So we rejoice and we thank you for this great opportunity to minister to your precious people. And we give you praise for the blessing upon your word tonight in Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's please our faith together as we say these words. I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the world. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand. The word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of the service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus name. And every believer says a powerful amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of the social media community. Brothers and sisters, we're so glad to welcome all of you. We also want to welcome the entire Quiet Bomb State community connected by way of Comfort FM, XL FM, Radio, Aquaibom, You Know Your FM, Inspiration FM, Heritage FM. We're so glad to welcome all of you to the service. Do me a favor tonight, call a friend, a family member, a loved one, and most especially, if you have people that are sick, or people that are challenged in their health, or people that are struggling with, you know, a health condition, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a whole lot of the manifestation of God's healing power through this service tonight. Whether on radio, television, online, or physically right here at 98 Waniba Road, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. So if you're in Uyo, you can dash down to the church. We're right here and it's a healing miracle service. And we trust God that you will come here and get a miracle. And if you can't get here... There's no distance in the realm of the spirit. Just stay hooked, stay connected, and just believe God for great things tonight. Our social media community, like you've always done, let's get the gospel to the ends of the earth. Help me share the broadcast. Help me tag some people. Put them on all the groups in your page. And of course, you know, make sure you, there are monogram, telegram, WhatsApp groups. Let's flood the earth with the good news of Christ. And if there are sick people around you, get them to tune in. Get them to hook up to the service tonight. It's going to be an exciting adventure in the word of his grace. I want to welcome all our campuses around the world and everybody connected to the service. Get ready. We're going to have an exciting time as we study the word of his grace together tonight. 
Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self as we get into the word tonight. Glory to God. Mm -mm -mm. So we're looking at the harvest of healing, miracles, signs, and wonders. Matthew chapter 11, verse 4 and 5. Matthew, but just before we read, let me just lay a little bit of foundation. You know, the stories of the four gospels present us examples. They present us examples. Examples of the healing power of God. Examples of the healing power of God. And examples of how it is ministered and how it is received. Examples of how the healing power of God is ministered and examples of how it is re received. Virtually, every Bible subject requires that you keep listening to it because at no point will you have mastery such that you don't have to listen again and again. You keep feeding on the world. It's like you ate last year and then you say, well, I don't have to eat this year. <laughs> or you slept last week and then you say, I don't have to sleep this week. There's nothing like that. Even normal human relationships and communications, you don't say, why do you say we have not spoken? Somebody says, brother, we've not spoken for a week. Why do you say we have not spoken? It's like it's normal for us not to speak. No, we want to speak with people whom we're in relationship with all the time. We want to relate with them. We want them to know we're okay and we want to be sure they are also okay. So, nobody just says, well, because we spoke last month, we don't need to speak anymore. So, when it comes to healing, you've got to keep listening to the word and pay attention to the word. Matthew chapter 11 verse 4. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 11 verse 4. Jesus answered and said unto them, go and show John again those things which you do here and see next verse the blind receive their sight did you observe the word receive the blind receive their sight and the lame walk the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them they have the gospel preached to them <clears throat> now the healing ministry of Jesus is the manifestation of the Father. The healing ministry of Jesus is the manifestation of the Father. Healing of the sick was the evidence that Jesus sent to John the Baptist. This was the proof of the anointing. In Matthew chapter 14 verse 35. Matthew chapter 14 verse 35. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased. They brought unto him all that were diseased. Look at verse 36. Matthew 14, 36. And besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched we are made perfectly whole. As they are the ones who besought him to allow them to touch the hem of his garment. He didn't carry his garment and put on them. They were the ones who demanded to receive through the transfer by touching the hem of his garment. And of course he says, as many as touched him were perfectly restored. The fringe of his garment was a medium for healing. Jesus never refused anybody healing. He never refused anybody healing because the healing ministry of Jesus is the manifestation of the Father. In John chapter 14 verse 12 and 13. John chapter 14 verse 12 and 13. Verily, verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater than this shall he do because I go unto my father. Next verse. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son. So Jesus speaks here based on what will happen upon his death 
burial and resurrection so he speaks of greater works they will be done in his name and of course we know that the name of jesus is the authority of jesus the name of jesus is the authority of jesus in mark chapter 16 verse 17 mark chapter 16 verse number 17 and this sign shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues next verse <clears throat> They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. They shall recover. So observe. They shall lay hands on the sick, but the sick will have to recover. Alright? Our own as ministers is to lay hands. And when we lay hands, it is left for the sick to receive and recover. We are not the ones that get the sick to recover. The sick must decide to receive and recover. They shall recover. His name is to prolong his days on earth. And today, Jesus is with us. Matthew 28 verse 20, he says, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. <clears throat> We have his name, so we have his healing ministry. We have his name, so we have his healing ministry. Peter and John acted on this. In Acts chapter 3, verse number 6. Acts chapter 3, verse number 6. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Huh. We have healing to give and receive. We have healing to give and receive. <clears throat> it's in his name. In his authority. The healing ministry of Jesus is prolonged in his name look at that same acts chapter 3 verse number 16 acts chapter 3 verse number 16 and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong whom you see and know yea the faith which is by him had given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. The faith which is by him. Not the faith which is by us. <laughs> the faith which is, observe, look at verse 15 of that Acts chapter 3. Talking about this lame man at the gate beautiful. 3, Acts 3, 15. And kill the prince of life. Give me verse 14. <clears throat> verse 14. But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. Next verse. And killed the prince of life whom God had raised from the dead. Whereof we are witnesses. Next verse. And his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong. So the man must have heard about the name. The man must have believed the name and must have received from the name hath made this man strong whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of ye all. Next verse. <clears throat> and now brethren, I would that through ignorance you did it as did also your rulers. So, the lame man had faith in the name of Jesus. And his, his, his faith in the name made him stood up and walked. Had given him this perfect soundness. His own faith in the name. Remember, they shall recover. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Faith in his name, the faith which is by the sick man, has made him strong 
in the presence of ye all. So Peter explains it. Faith in his name. Because healing in the name of Jesus is the continuity of his ministry. And today we participate in the ministry of Jesus by receiving and giving healing in his name. We participate in the healing ministry of Jesus by receiving and giving healing in his name. Can somebody say with me very loud, the power of God is working in my body right now. Say it again, the power of God is working in my body right now. I am healed, I am whole, I am strong. I didn't have a powerful amen. Now let's answer something quickly. Does God tempt with sickness or disease? Does God tempt with sickness or disease? Well, God doesn't give sickness. We have seen that much from our study in the few days we've been studying. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 11. Matthew chapter 7 verse number 11. If you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him the father in heaven only gives good things who is in heaven give good things God our father always gives good gifts serpents in scriptures represent the works of satan sickness is an oppression of satan put up for me acts chapter 10 verse 38 acts chapter 10 verse number 38 how god anointed jesus christ or jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him God does not tempt with evil God does not tempt with evil James chapter 1 verse 13 let no man say when he's tempted I am tempted of God for God cannot be tempted with evil neither tempted he any man he won't test us with sickness because God gives only good gifts. He won't tempt us or test us with sickness because God only gives good gifts. In James 1.16, Brother James says, Do not err, my beloved brethren, verse 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above the word do not err is the word planner O. do not be led astray we easily err when we accrue every and anything to god just like job thought that god caused the sickness and disease in his house job erred job thought it was god that brought calamity men are stewards of the healing ministry of Jesus. Jesus was never sick. Because sickness is not his will. Sickness is not his design. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. Brother Paul says. 1 Corinthians 11 1. Be you followers of me. Even as I also am of Christ. Even as I also am of Christ. Let's answer a few questions. Was Paul sick in his body? If yes, was it God who put it there to keep Paul in check or to test Paul? Well, a careful reading of the verses of scripture will identify the root cause of the tongue the tongue because brother paul says it is the messenger of satan the messenger of satan 
God didn't send it. The thorn in the flesh was sent by Satan. Was this thorn sickness? The thorn in the flesh. Well, the term thorn in the flesh implies opposition and persecution from human beings. Thorn in the flesh. Not sickness and disease. Further references that establish that is Numbers 3355. Numbers 3355. Those you let remain of them shall be as pricks in your eyes and as thorns in your sides. Joshua 2313. Joshua 2313. They shall be a snare and a trap to you and a scourge in your sides and thorns in your eyes. Judges chapter 2 verse 3. Mm -mm. Judges chapter 2 verse 3. But they shall be as thorns in your sides and their God shall be a snare to you. So brother Paul's thorns in the flesh was a figure of speech for persecution. A figure of speech for persecution and affliction he faced in the preaching of the gospel. The thorn in the flesh was a figure of speech for persecution and afflictions that he faced in the preaching of the gospel. Not sickness or disease. Look at what brother Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. And of course, you know, God told him my grace is sufficient. Because for every minister of the gospel who is in distress and persecution to the threat of his life, there is enough grace from God to sustain and preserve him. My strength is made perfect in weakness. My grace is sufficient for thee. Because brother Paul says, I besought the Lord thrice to take it away. And God said, we don't take away persecution. We don't take away affliction. But in the persecution, my grace is sufficient for you. Are we in the building? Yeah, so the thorn in the flesh was not sickness. It was persecution and affliction for the sake of the gospel that brother Paul was called to preach. Now let's look at a case or a scenario here. In Galatians chapter 4 verse 13. Galatians chapter 4 verse 13. You know how through infirmity of the flesh. This is Paul speaking. I preach the gospel unto you at the first. Through infirmity of the flesh. So when did Paul preach that gospel to them at the first? Well, this region was called Galatia. Which constitutes of Dabe and Lystra. Dabe and Lystra. Okay, and Antioch. So let's examine the first time he came to them and how he came to them. Acts chapter 14, verse 6 to verse 10, and then 19 to 21. It's quite a read. Acts chapter 14, verse 6. They were aware of the situation. They were aware of the situation, made their escape to Lystra and Derby, cities of Laconia and the neighboring district verse 7 and there they continued to preach the glad tidings verse 8 now at Lystra a man sat who found it impossible to use his feet for he was a cripple from birth and had never walked verse 9 he was listening to Paul as he talked and gazing intently at him and observing that he had faith to be healed. Verse 10. Shouted, shouted to him saying, stand erect on your feet. And he leaped up and walked. He leaped up, 
Paul didn't make him leap up. The man leaped up and walked. Because the recipient will have to receive intentionally and deliberately. It is not forced on anybody. You receive healing by faith and you act like people that are healed. You receive the healing by faith when we release it to you through the teaching of the word or through prayer and then you act like those who are healed. Look at verse 19 to 21. Acts chapter 14, 19 to 21. And there came three that certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul drew him out of the city supposing he had been dead. Next verse. How be it, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day, he departed with Barnabas to Derby. 21. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch. In this account, brother Paul was stoned and he was left for dead for healing a sick person. The next day with the wounds, he continues to preach and he came to them. That's the ailment, the infirmity, the thorn in the flesh. He was stoned. He didn't fall ill because he was preaching with the wounds. He was preaching with the wounds. Now that said, Paul never taught believers to see sickness as the works of God. Never. Neither did Jesus teach sickness as the work of God. The work of God is the healing of the sick. Now, like I've been saying in the last few days, medication is not a sin. There's nothing wrong with medication. We should never despise the natural cures prescribed by doctors which are the wisdom of God too. We should always also know where sickness comes from. Look at Matthew chapter 8 verse 1 to 3. Matthew chapter 8 verse 1 to 3. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him too. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Three. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Instantly his leprosy was cured and cleansed. This is the father's nature. This is our father's character. He is ever willing to heal sickness and disease. We are not allowed or we are not to allow wrong theologies, wrong mindsets, wrong thought patterns. Give us wrong ideas about God. Thereby hindering us from receiving healing and ministering healing. God is good. God is good. We have a healing Jesus. Hallelujah. We have a healing Jesus. Hebrews 13, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Healing is given as a gift of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit are a work of redemption. So healing is given to us today. The gift of healing. Just like Jesus, the church has been endowed with healing power. What Jesus gave us is the spirit. The unconditional mercy that comes in the demonstration of his power is called gifts of healing. Healing is a free gift of God. Healing is a free gift of God. Can somebody say loud with me? Healing is God's act of kindness. Say it again. Healing is God's act of kindness. 
I have been endowed with healing power. Say with me, the power of God is working in my body right now. I thought I would hear powerful, amen. Now, when it comes to ministering healing, somebody can even be sick and he prays for the sick and they are healed. <laughs> you know? You know, there are some subjects in the Bible you don't assume you know them. And one of those subjects is healing. Another one is walking in the spirit. You know? You keep listening and listening and listening and listening. And the more you listen, the more you feed. The more you feed, the stronger you get. You know, with the population explosion globally, we have in the world today a lot of unhealthy living. You know, because our health lifestyle has been compromised. Totally compromised. So you can't take divine healing for granted. No. You can't take divine healing for granted. Healing is a subject you must listen to over and over and over again. Especially as you grow older. You are exposed to different things. You know? People die of different causes. That is why you can't afford to take the subject of healing for granted. You should have the discipline to listen and listen and listen to the teaching of God's word, which is God's medicine. The word of God is God's medicine. You must take it in over and over and keep your body immunized and in sound health. You know, even the technology we use, all the cell phones, television sets, all our gadgets, they are all detrimental to health. All of them. We are exposed to a world infiltrated with agents that are capable of breaking down human health cells, you know, human health systems. They look at our environment, pollutions in our environment, our society is filled with anti-health agents. So, the believer cannot take divine healing for granted. You can't. You can't afford to toy around with your health and with your body. Especially since you are still carrying on mortality. The body is frail. The body is subject to, 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 to all kinds of things. That is why you must have a constant intake of God's healing power. You keep taking in the word. You feed on the word. You feed on the word. And build a strong defense system. Against the invasions. Of our world today. The more reason why. You must be resolute about God's power. If you don't know how to believe God. On seeming simple things. How will you contend when complicated things come? You should learn to believe God for healing from headache. Learn to believe God to be healed from malaria. When the symptoms come, lay hands and rebuke it. And refuse to listen till it goes. Learn to believe God for things that look seemingly simple. You know, little, little things. Believe God for healing from them. So that you build your faith to believe for complicated things. Because faith groweth exceedingly. Faith groweth by feeding and by exercise. You exercise your faith. You exercise your faith. You start believing for seeming small, small things. Things that are not life threatening. You believe God for healing on things that are not life threatening. And you grow your faith through that. Such that you can even believe God for things that are life threatening. Even in the area of provision. You start believing God for basic necessities. Little, little monies here and there. You believe God for them. You call them. You walk in faith. And trust God for favor. And then you begin to see provision. Supernatural. Divine favor. Divine provision. So when you have mastered believing God in the little, little things with provision, you can believe God for bigger things. Because faith groweth exceedingly. Am I communicating at all? Yeah. You grow your faith. You grow your faith. 
You feed on the word. You exercise your faith. Look at Mark chapter 5 verse 25. Let's see some key moments in that story. Mark chapter 5 verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. So her condition was for 12 years. It must be chronic. Very chronic condition. Look at verse 27. Mark 5 27. And, at, and when she had heard of Jesus. Glory to God. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. When she had heard of Jesus. You know, sometimes we underestimate the place of hearing. There was another healing afterwards. In that same Mark chapter 5 verse 36. Mark chapter 5 verse 36. And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Two times now. Alright? So, Mark 5 27, when she heard. Mark 5 36, as soon as Jesus heard. Look at the two instances. Number one, the woman heard and she said, Second one, Jesus heard and he said. The woman heard and she said. Jesus heard and he said. Which means you do not leave reports hanging. Whether you saw it on TV, YouTube, newspaper, or a friend said it, you must say something. Jesus said to Jairus, fear not. Which means fear comes to us by what we hear. Fear, doubt, anxiety are communicated through words. And as a born again man, you naturally are not supposed to be afraid. That is why Mark eleven twenty three says, what so, what, Whosoever shall say to this mountain... Be thou removed and be thou cast to the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever thing he says. In the Greek, the doubt is passive. It's passive, which means it came. So that means doubt came, fear came, and both Jesus and the woman with the issue of blood, they heard something. You can choose what you want to hear. You don't have to hear everything. <laughs> you can select what you want to hear. You can choose what you want to hear. <clears throat> Jesus didn't exactly have the best report. Uh -uh. People didn't always say good things about Jesus. I hope we know that. People had different versions. Some called him a wine barber. Some called him a friend of sinners. Some called him a gluten. Some even said Jesus was possessed with evil spirits. There were different versions. Different versions. You choose which one to hear. There were different versions. People had different things to say about Jesus. <laughs> yeah. In Mark chapter 6 verse 2, in his own hometown, they had funny information about him. Mark chapter 6 verse 2. Put it up for me. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing were astonished, saying, from whence had this man these things? They call him man. <laughs> man. From whence has this man these things? <laughs> and what wisdom is this which is given unto him? That even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. Next verse. It's not this the carpenter. It's carpenter. Carpenter. The son of Mary. The brother of James. And Joseph. And of Judah. And Simon. And I noticed sisters here with us. They were offended at him. <laughs> They were offended. Ah. See you. 
Sio. Kapinta pikin. Say you want to pray miracle for me. <laughs> Kai. I don't suffer. <laughs> I don't suffer. Kapinta pikin. Oh. Mary pikin now. The pikin of Mary. For international audience, pikin means the child. The child of Mary. <laughs> Mary Pekin. Oh. Oh. You know, you know no carpenter. Carpenter for junction. <laughs> uh -uh. When did he, which shrine did he go to? Which native doctor did he meet to come back like that? Now wow. Wonders will never end. And they were angry. Oh yes, they took him for granted. This one. Huh? Huh? You. Better people are talking. You two are, shut up. <laughs> they were offended at him. Different versions. Except God has not called you. When God calls you, there will be different versions. There are people that will hate you that you are called. There are people that will not like you because it is your face. If your face were to disappear and another face appear there, they will not mind. Versions. That's why you must select what to hear. Because those who had carpenter's son, those who had Mary's son, none of them received from God. But the woman with the issue of blood decided to hear Jesus the healer. Jesus the healer. Oh, you must select what you must hear. You must select what to hear. Now, let's look at something. The woman with the issue of blood heard about Jesus. Then she said, Jesus heard about Jairus' daughter and he said, in the hometown of Jesus, they heard about Jesus. They also said, are you following? The woman with the issue of blood heard and said, Jesus heard and said. The people in the hometown of Jesus heard about Jesus and said, what you say is a function of what you heard. Whatever you give your ears to will determine what you say and what you say will determine what you have. So, in the hometown of Jesus, faith was communicated. In one instance, what was heard communicated fear. In another instance, what was heard communicated dishonor. Some people fear. Some people dishonor. Jesus said to Jairus, Fear not. Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe all things are possible. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe all things are possible. Lord, I believe. Imagine if this woman was curious to know everything about Jesus. Because some people, what kills them is curiosity. Eh, what did they say? Eh, on the internet, what did they write? Eh, eh, which video? Where can I find the video? If she was curious, she would have not received a miracle. Because her curiosity will have brought her in touch with unbelief and doubt. And that will have dampened and contaminated her belief system. There are curiosities that are not good for you as a child of God. You shouldn't be a gatherer of gossip and information because it has the tendency of giving you 
a permanent injury. The woman selected what to hear. She was not curious. She was not curious. Curiosity is not spirituality. Curiosity is not spirituality. There's, there's nobody who is not influenced in one degree or the other by what he hears. Majority of things you know as a human being came from what you heard. How will you underestimate what comes to your ears? How? How? Somebody you used to respect very well, somebody just told you something about him and the respect crashes. Suddenly you don't have value for that person anymore. Human beings are influenced by what we hear. That's why you guard your heart. How do you guard your heart? You guard your mouth, your eyes, and your ears. Those are the gates to your heart. Why? For out of it are the influences of life. She heard about Jesus. And what did she hear? She selected what to hear. She heard about the healing ministry of Jesus. You must be selective about what you allow to enter into your ears. Control what you hear from movies, news, TV. In Mark 4, 24, Jesus said, take heed what you hear. Take heed what you hear. Always know, always know that a miracle is not logical. There's no logic in miracles. And remember, fear is communicated by hearing. You know, Jesus, who is God, if he didn't need man's action, he wouldn't have said to that guy, fear not, only believe. And the question will be, how do you believe? You believe in an active way. Faith is expressed. Faith is expressed. Let's look at what you can hear. Number one, you can hear what the doctor said. Oh, the doctor said. You must respond quickly when the doctor gives you a report that contradicts the word of God. Like Jesus immediately said to Jairus, only believe, fear not. He didn't wait for the, for the issue to, to sink in. He struck it at his first appearance. Raise the volume of your word. Raise the volume of the word of God you've heard over doubt and fear. In fact, sometimes you have to shout. It can never happen. It can never happen. Sometimes you have to shout. You say, oh, it, 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 it looks like you have eye problems. No, it, before they land, it can, you strike it. Before they land. Once you see the direction of the statement, strike it. The power of God is working in my body. The power of God is working in my body. I have total health. I have complete healing. My body is sound. My body is strong. Don't wait for the statement to land. Don't wait for the statement to arrive. Meet it as it is about to land and settle it in space. Don't let it land in your space. Settle the matter in the space there. It can never happen. There are times you have to shout. It can never happen. Never. Not here. The power of God is working in my body. By his stripes, I am healed. Somebody shout, I hear you. Somebody shout, I hear you. You know, you got born again by speaking. Is it not true? You got born again by speaking. You got filled with the Holy Ghost by speaking. You got other people born again by speaking. Is it not true? You praise God by speaking. You pray and make power available by speaking. So who told you? <laughs> who told you that you should underestimate the power of your speech? Yeah, they talk, talk is cheap. Who told you? Talk created the universe. Talk is not cheap.
talk is very expensive. As soon as fearful thoughts come, strike. In Mark 5, 15, they came to hear and to be healed. To hear and to be healed. Luke 6, 19, they sought to touch him. They sought to touch him. Look at the woman who just heard about it. She just started saying, as soon as she heard, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I'm just looking for him. The day I see him and touch him, I'll be fine. The day I see him and touch him, I'll be fine. Somebody said, do you know him? It doesn't matter. The day I see him and I touch him, I'll be fine. The day I see him and I touch him, I'll be fine. And the moment she saw him, she pushed through the crowd. She was too much in faith to be stopped. No protocol could hinder her. Bam, she touched. And the blood stopped. Why? She said it. And when you say it, you shall have it. She said it. If I can touch, I shall be made whole. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. I mean, learn to have your own convictions when it comes to healing and miracles. Learn to use your faith even when there are no meetings like this. Even when we don't have a service like this. Learn to use your faith. Even when we don't have a service like this. Don't wait until there is a service to use your faith. If the devil meets you at home and tells you you will die. Tell him it cannot happen. The power of God is at work in my body. Are you still here? In Numbers chapter 13 and 14, there were some spies who went to check the promised land, Canaan. Ten came back and said the power of God is true. <laughs> the promise of God is true. There is truly a land that flows with milk and honey. We went there, we saw the land. These are exhibits. This is proof that the land exists. But it's not for us. <laughs> there are giants of all that we saw in the land the only one that impressed us were the giants we have brought the proof that there's a land with milk and honey we entered and took and came out the giants did not stop us but our hindrance are the giants you, we are not hindered from going in to spy mentality Mentality defines destination. You can never be better than your thought process. You can never be better than your mind. They say we are grasshoppers. You know, Dr. Gabriel, they were balancing it. You know those people that like balance. He said, we saw the land. They say land like that. It flows with milk and honey. Balance it. Balance it. We cannot go. There are giants. Balance means add unbelief to it. <laughs> When they say balance, they are saying add doubt to it. These people balance the report. They were very balanced. They were so balanced that they died in the wilderness. That's how balance works. You understand? The way balance works is when you are balanced like that, you can never possess the promised land. The balance, is it not balance? We saw the land. Didn't they see the land? We entered the land. Did they enter? We brought fruit. Didn't they bring fruit? And then we saw the giants. Didn't they see the giants? That's balance. They saw this and that. Don't always stay here. Bring the other side. The other side of God. They balance. <laughs> they balance it. <laughs> they do. They like balance. If the truth is not balanced, it's not truth. What makes the truth is that the truth is balanced. And the truth says, go in and possess it. Don't go and examine the giants. Like I always say, analysis leads to paralysis. When you are analyzing too much, you get paralyzed. There is no logic in miracles. Miracles are not logical. They don't make sense. And don't forget, the ten spies were the majority. The minority were two. Two said, we're well able to go and possess the land. Let us go at once. We don't even need a strategy. We will just walk over the land. The ten said, no. 
<laughs> a majority carries a vote. Democracy. Today they will tell you, tell us, be realistic. Give us a realistic analysis. Uh, they gave them, the giants. <laughs> but Joshua and Caleb had another spirit. We also have in the same spirit of faith like Joshua and Caleb. We believe. Therefore, we speak. Hallelujah. Now, you know, historically, about three million people, we're talking about three million people. But Joshua and Caleb were the only two that stood out with a different report. Sometimes, the right person may not be popular. Sometimes, the right person may be the only person going against the norm. Sometimes, what you believe for, nobody may see it. The whole world may be against you. But once you see it in the word of God and you believe it in your heart, get ready to possess it. Faith sometimes can have an array of enemies and doubt. It doesn't matter the number. If one person believes God, God's power will come through. Don't look at the power of God based on the, you know, on the testimonies you have seen. The woman had a personal persuasion. Only two people believe. Ladies and gentlemen, build a company of faith. Build a company of faith around you. People who take God's word and radically believe it. You know, fear is contagious. Fear is more contagious than coronavirus. Fear. And it can spread very fast. Bible says fear spread among them. They cried all night. We know of all night prayer. I've not heard of all night crying, but we saw it in numbers. All night weeping. Three million people crying all night. All night weeping. They cried until there was no strength in them. That is what fear produces. Bible says fear has torment. It will torment you. It will torment you. You will die before you die. You know when fear grips a man. He dies before he dies. Some people die ten times before they die once. Fear will kill you while you are still alive. That's why you get rid of fear. Fear is not of God. Fear torments. Fear is Satan's department of torment. Yeah. Fear is Satan's department of torment. The Bible says, He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Perfect love casts out fear. Fear torments. Most people are sick just because of fear. Fear. The COVID season. What made the COVID so devastating was the fear that came with it. Fear. They were pumping fear everywhere. Pumping fear everywhere. Fear filled the whole world. People would be standing without COVID and imagining the COVID entering them. Fear. When they come, <coughs> they say COVID has come. Maybe it's COVID. And as a man, think it. Yeah. There was too much fear. It was hyped. All over social media, all over television, all the TV stations. Fear filled the entire world. Men were bound by fear. And when fear takes over a place, Satan takes charge. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Once fear comes, know that Satan is here. God is never where fear is. Satan is always working with fear. When you see faith, God is there. What faith is to God is what fear is to Satan. What faith is to God is what fear is to Satan. Say no to fear. I refuse to fear. I refuse to fail. God's power is working mightily in me. And then feed on the word of God regularly. Feed on God's word day and night. Be addicted to God's word. Hear the word often. Feed your spirit, man, by speaking. Speak, 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 speak. Speak all the time. All the time. Let the word of God come out of your mouth all the time. Hear yourself speak God's word to yourself. 
I speak God's word to myself all the time. I'm the best preacher of myself. Take the word, put it in your mouth, and speak it over your life. Feed your spirit man. Ladies and gentlemen, change your diet. If you're feeding on fear, change your diet. Look for sound word and feed your spirit aggressively feed on the word of God. There is no incurable disease with God. You didn't hear that. There is no incurable disease with God. I don't care which doctor diagnosed you. There is no incurable disease with God. None. There is no incurable disease with God. I want to repeat it one more time. There is no incurable disease with God. If they like, let there be no tube in your, in your womb. Let there be no tube. God's power moves in there. Tubes are created. There is no incurable disease with God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. No incurable disease with God. Can I hear you say that two times? One more time. Can I have a powerful amen? Oh yes. Guard what you hear. Guard what you hear. Remember, we are in the information age and Satan is the God of this world. So protect your ears and your eyes. Mind what you see. Mind what you see, mind what you hear, mind what you say. Mind what you see, mind what you hear, mind what you say. If you're really serious about divine healing and you want to live in divine health, you got to mind what you say. You wake up in the morning, you feel a pain in your body, you open your mouth. My body is strong. My body is well. The power of God is moving in my body. My power of God is moving in my body. You touch the place where the pain is. The power of God is moving in my body. Refuse to recognize the pain. Recognize the oppression of God's power. You stay in faith. Hallelujah. The just live by faith. You stay in faith. You function in the reality of God's word. You stay in the reality of God's word. You stay with God's testimony. You believe God's report. You stand with God's report. Hallelujah. I believe God's report. I am what the word says I am. I thought you would shout that. I am what the word says I am. I have what the word says I have. I can do what the word says I can do. The power of God is working in my body. My body is responding to the power of God. My organs are responding to the power of God. My system is responding to the power of God. My bones are responding to the power of God. My heart is responding to the power of God. The power of God is working in my body right now. I thought I would have a powerful amen. And Jesus healed them all. Stand on your feet. That's all I've got for you tonight. And Jesus healed them all. You make up your mind not to tolerate sickness. You make up your mind not to tolerate disease. Yeah. And you make up your mind. If you're sitting on a wheelchair, see yourself walk out of it. If you're lying on a bedridden bed, see yourself get out of that bed. It doesn't matter what the diagnosis and the prognosis are. Believe the word of God against every medical report. Believe the word of God. Believe the word of God. There's a woman called Lilia Yeomans. She was a medical doctor. All she said, she all her practice life, she never had one person die in her hospital. Because she would diagnose medically, give them medication, then tell them, beyond this is the power of God. So let me pray for you. She will minister to them in the things of the spirit. Minister to them. So they will go with their medication and the power of God. And they all kept getting healed. Kenna Hagen told the story. She never had one person die in a hospital because she engaged God's power and made it clear to them. Whether they are Muslims or Christians or not, she told them about the power of God. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. We minister the things of the spirit. We minister the things in the spirit. It doesn't matter what the condition is. There is no incurable disease with God. 
You didn't hear what I said. There is no incurable disease with God. Right now where you are hearing the sound of my voice, you can make up your mind to walk out of that sick bed and walk into the healing power of God. Get me one microphone quickly. I need Dr. Gabriel to pray for the sick tonight. Get me a microphone quickly. It doesn't matter where you are. The power of God is at work in your body right now. The power of God, everybody say with me, the power of God is at work in my body right now. Say it again. The power of God is at work in my body right now. Say the power of God is moving in my organs all over my body. The creative power, the curative power, the restorative power of God is at work in my body. All of my organs are responding to the power of God right now. All of my organs are responding to the power of God right now. Now say with me, I receive healing. Healing. I receive healing miracle for my body right now. My bones are strong. My bones are strong. My bones are strong. My joints are strong. My bones are strong. My joints are strong. I didn't hear powerful. Amen. Say sickness cannot survive in my body. Can I hear you say three times? Two more times. One more time. Say, I have superiority by the power of resurrection over sickness, over disease, over sickness, over infirmity. I am loosed to enjoy the healing power of God in my body. I didn't hear your amen. Dr. Gabriel, come look at the cameras. Let's pray for the sick tonight. Take care of the place online on TV, radio. Let's minister to the sick by the spirit. 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 Let's minister Rapatesa, <laughs> Every blindness condition right now, eye defect, be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. We come against glaucoma and come against cataracts right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. We declare right now every mental condition be healed right now in the name of Jesus. We command soundness, soundness by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every terminal condition, cancer. We rebuke you right now. In the name of we Jesus. command you flush out of that body, of that system. We command you every witch made whole Manga. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And right now we decree that the entire body system of that paralyzed, paralyzed from the waist downwards be healed now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We command that that backache that came as a result of the shift of the disc of that brother right now right now you are lying in a position yes. that is immobile we decree right now that the there is healing in your vertebral dicks right now yes 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 be restored in the name of jesus Amen. get up now and get work up. Get, up. get up now that's and work right. get right. up now right. and work that's by right. the power that's right. of the holy ghost that's right. healing is yours right now in the name of take it Take it, take it by the power of the spirit. Take it right now. Yes. Take it right now. Take it right in now. In the name of that Jesus. saw, that saw in the leg is healed right in now. In the name that saw, Kabasa Taladia, and Reduza Tobayata, Egeboya Baba, that's infected. Shatola by Kadoba. That leg will not be amputated. We command healing. Kadoba. Healing invasion upon that leg right now. A new skin comes up from behind. In the name of Jesus. That saw in the name of Jesus. Amen. Satan, take your hands off God. Take your hands off. Right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Take your hands off. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody with a neck condition. With a neck condition. 
I see a cast on your neck. Now that neck has been healed just now. Begin to move that neck. Begin to move that neck. You couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. The cast was put on that neck two weeks ago. Now begin to move that neck. Begin to move. You, you are healed right now. You are healed right now. You are healed right now. Move that neck. Move that neck. Jiko takalaba. Mebruka takalita bababasa. Babruka takatone keke. That growth disappears. That growth melts out. That growth melts out. In the name of Jesus. Shakota palita manaka toneke. Legrado saka. Receive. Receive. Now receive your healing. Receive your miracle. On television. On social media. On radio. Receive your miracle. Be healed from your head to the soles of your foot. Every week made whole. Thank you father. Now lift your hands and begin to give him praise. All over this building. Give him praise. Zakota, Makila, Nakota, Agaba Jokolova. God's healing power is all over this place. All over this place. Now begin to do what you couldn't do before. You couldn't bend, bend. You couldn't move your neck, move it. Do what healed people do. Once you believe you are healed, stand up and do what healed people do. Do exactly what healed people do right now. You believe it, you receive it, you have it. Do what healed people do right now. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. It is done. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. You won't fall. Go ahead. That's it. Go ahead. <laughs> That's it. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Do what healed people do right now. Right now. Right now. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Lamb of God. Hallelujah. It is done. In the name of Jesus. Can we celebrate miracles with a shout? Glory! Amen. And every other area of your life, your finances, your marriage, your family, receive your miracle now. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those documents are signed. That check is signed. Receive a miracle phone call. Receive a miracle email. Take it. In the name of Jesus. Praise you, Father. It is done. And we rejoice. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Glory. Praise God. We're expecting testimonies all over the place. I mean, we have a lot of calls coming in, emails coming in of testimonies all over the world. I'm sure from this Sunday, when Michael Bush and myself will begin to ask the counselor, we're going to have a lot of calls. We're going to read a lot of testimonies of what God has done this week during the week of the miraculous. I mean, we have all kinds of miraculous encounters people are having all over the world, even right here in the house. What a joy, what a blessing. And I want you to get ready because you won't be left behind. Every one of you hearing the sound of my voice, you're a candidate for a miracle. The power of God targets you right now. You can't escape the target of God's power. So your testimony is released. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to take up your offerings quickly and I'll be joining Mr. Michael Bush in Ask the Counselor. We'll be answering a few questions doctrinally, bringing you clarity from the word of Almighty God. I want to thank partners and friends who continually give to this ministry to help us do the things we do. And those of you that are giving to support our social media global campaign, the campaign is on. I'm sure you, you can see what's going on all over the place. The campaign is aggressively on and we're pushing. We want to ensure that we reach out to, to the people in, on social media. Three billion people are on social media. That is a world without walls, without limits. And that is a world that is real time. We can hit all the three billion people at the same time on social media. All it takes is just more money to push the messages out. And nobody will have an excuse for not hearing the gospel. The radio audience, you know, I'm sure you're all partaking in this. And the gospel is getting clearer. Your convictions are getting clearer. Miracle signs and wonders are happening all over the world. Partners, you make this happen. And I want to appreciate and thank all of you for supporting this vision as we continue to thrust in advancing the cause of Christ. You know, every evening we're here tomorrow, 6 p.m., I'll be live again bringing teaching in this same area of healing. You never, you never can underestimate your need for healing. If you don't need it now, somebody around you may need it, 
and you may need it one day. So it's important to build your, your knowledge, to build your faith, and to build your understanding on how to receive healing whenever you need it. And how to help somebody receive who may need it around you. I'm excited. Grab your offerings. Let's honor the word of God as we give tonight. The banking details are scrolling online for, for the TV audience. The banking details are there. Radio audience, Mr. Michael Bush will read the banking details before we answer the questions. But I'm honored to serve you the grace of God. Lift your offerings up, Father. We give in faith. We give with joy. We are so honored to be called by your name. Thank you for testimonies, miracles, healing, signs, wonders all over our social media community, our online community, radio audience, and those in the building here and all our campuses and centers around the world. We rejoice. And we thank you because it's happening right now. It's happening right now. It's happening right now in the name of Jesus. Every need is met supernaturally. Favors, connections, opportunities released to you right now. God's favor is at work on your behalf. And we rejoice for supernatural provisions, miracles in the finances of your people. And we give you praise for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. Oh, glory to God. On social media, once you confirm a miracle, shoot an email to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. We want to share in your testimonies. We want to share in the good news of what God is doing around you and in your life through the teaching of his word right here in this house. I look forward to connecting with you in the other studio and remember tomorrow 6 p.m. GMT plus one will be live again. If you know of sick people far from where you are, call them, contact them, reach out to them and ask them to hook up to these services. God's healing power is available to supply everyone who is in need of it. There's no scarcity in the availability of God's power. Until I see you in the other studio, enjoy the grace of Christ. Let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service tonight. Glory! Amen! Woo! You have been blessed by this message. For these, all the messages and books by Dr. Abel Damino, please call plus 234-806- 800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com It is the will of God that we should be in good health always and be healed of every infirmity. If you don't need healing, someone around you definitely might need it. This is your opportunity and for those sick around you to be connected to the teaching of God's word for healing. Don't forget, God's word is God's medicine. I prophesy as your amen will come like thunder, you will swim in the miraculous. Power City International presents Harvest of Healing, Miracles, Signs and Wonders, ministering Dr. Abel Daminer. Date, 11th April to 18th April 2021. Time, Monday to Saturday, 6 p.m. daily and on Sunday, first service, 8 a.m. and second service, 11 a.m. GMT plus one and a rebroadcast on the following radio stations. Radio Aquaibom 90.5 FM Uyo 11 AM to 1 PM XL FM 106.9 Uyo 3 PM Unio FM 100.7 Uyo 3 PM to 5 PM Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo 6 PM to 8 PM Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo 9 PM to 10 PM Heritage Radio 104.9 Yo, 10 p.m. till midnight daily and also on Kingdom Live Network Station. Also live on Facebook at Abel Damino Public Figure, YouTube Abel Damino Ministries International, Twitter Abel Damino and Instagram at Abel Damino Watch Real Time. Venue Power City International, number 98 Wangibo Road, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Host Doctors Abel and Rachel Daminer.
as Global Boba said just a moment ago, for part two of this global showpiece on radio, on TV, and on the social media and online, of course. Okay, so the bank details, especially for our radio audience, uh, the account name is Power City International. There are three banks. There is uh, FCMB, there is Zenith, and there is UB. I start on um, this edition of the program with Zenith. 10, 12, 36, 59, 12. 10, 12, 36, 59, 12. Then FCMB is 29.82.68.2028. FCMB is 29.82.68.2028. And of course, the third, but certainly not the least bank, is UBA, 139.26465. 139.26465. Announcement number one down. Okay, final announcement, because Global Boba is already seated, and in 30 seconds, you should be seeing him for sponsorship. Just call us up on plus two three four. 803-275-6104 or you email Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Dr. there, of course, is DR. My name is Michael Bush, my production team, and of course, we're so thankful to them. We're thankful to all of you, especially our audience. Put your hands together for yourselves, please. So nice to see you. So nice to see you. But the man that receives all the applause are the accolades, and justifiably so, is here. Global Baba is... Uh, an international televangelist is also on radio 11 hours, all of 11 hours daily in Uyo, Nigeria. I'm so super excited to see that. I feel very privileged to sit by him every edition of this program. He's written right now, I thought there were 30, but now 32 books and counting. You know, the next two would be up soon. And he continues to do great things. Global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina. The Intercontinental, Mr. Bush. So good to have you here so nice today. To see you. Just coming from live radio. Day. Yes. I know it must have been a busy sure. day for you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, but, good to um, have you here. It's tonight. fantastic to be Praise here. God. It's fantastic to be here. Okay, Global Baba, two things we must do before we set sail. Number one is the prayer that we always pray, the ritualistic prayer we always pray for our Kwaibum, for our government, for our people, for Nigeria, for our world. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that grace abounds all over the nations of the earth because the truth of the gospel is being proclaimed more than ever before. Men are being raised in all the nations of the earth to preach the truth of the gospel with boldness. So we pray for boldness, more boldness upon your servants all over the world. Men and women, brethren that are rising to preach Christ. They have utterance, they have boldness to declare the truth. Thank you for our government in Aquaibom State. We use the Aquaibom State government as a point of contact to all the governments around the world. That, Lord, all of our leaders, the governor, his cabinet, will have such unusual compassion to be able to continue to serve the people of Aquaibom and the people of Nigeria and the rest of the world and create enabling environments for potentials to thrive. And in the name of Jesus, we deny the devil access to our cities and our nations. Amen. Satan, we bind and restrict and stop your activities. Amen. And we declare that the gospel continues to gain fodrant all over the world. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. No, Baba, fantastic. Um, you know, so just before we start looking at the questions, by the way, we spent last night in um, South Africa. Yes. So be beginning there from in a moment. Let's just start off from where you ended. Um, earlier um, during part one where you talked about the the resurrection no not resurrection oh yes that's resurrection when jesus rose um, i'm wondering the bible records that he he rose with um, many other people yes yes and we, we guess that would have been many generations would have been so so many people yes where are they where were they where did they move to where do they stay they are called a cloud of witnesses so when he rose with them the bible tells us that they appeared in the city all over the city and they were appearing to their great-grandchildren. And they were saying, hey, this great-grandpa on my way to heaven. Hey, all of that was part of the proof of Christ's resurrection. Now, after that, the Bible says he was received up into heaven with a cloud. That cloud is all of those people. Mm. So all of those people are in heaven with Jesus right now. All right? And um, that, that is why the word cloud there is not a cloud for rain. It's actually the, the people are called cloud in the Bible. Cloud of witnesses. So he went with a cloud. And on the day of our own resurrection, we're all going to go with Jesus as a cloud. So that's, yeah. that's where they are. Okay. Um, earlier today, I was listening to you on radio as soon as I stepped out. Because incidentally, I finished my radio program at 6. So as I stepped out into the car, I, I, I joined you live. And then you said something about um, the resurrection of Christ um, guaranteeing salvation. Yes. Uh, what about those who don't believe? They are not saved. 
Okay. Once a man doesn't believe that Jesus rose from the dead, he's not saved. Salvation is predicated on the resurrection. That is why churches must leave every other thing and preach the resurrection. Because that is the fulcrum. That is the basis for Christianity. If Christ is not risen, then our faith is vain. We are still in our sins. If you don't practice Christianity, you're not a Christian. It could be any other, it could be worshipping in, in any of the other regions or any of the other relig uh, religions. But you believe that Christ uh, resurrected. Are you saved? Once you believe that Christ resurrected, it means the Holy Ghost comes in you. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. So he will guide you into the Bible. Because the Bible is the only sacred book on earth that contains the comprehensive revelation of Christ. Okay, finally, Global Baba, before we join, um, uh, begin our... Uh, global trip and um on this edition we're going to almost all the continents because we have too many questions coming there from uh, i'm just wondering you, you study clearly it shows you study so 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 much in fact too much uh, i'm wondering therefore have you ever come across in in studying have you ever come across something that shocks you yeah the first time yes years ago the first time i discovered that water baptism was not relevant i threw my bible on the floor i just threw it away because when I realized that what came on me was an understanding that I will have to preach this. So I will now be like the only voice against the entire church world that has preached baptism as a condition for salvation. And I was not ready. When I discovered, I just threw my Bible and said, God, no, 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 no. Then God spoke to me. He said, are you serious about preaching the truth of the gospel or not? I said, I am serious. Then he said to me, then you have to preach everything that is the truth of the gospel. Mm. So that was shocking for me. Mm. Very shocking. But you still went back. And I won't forget that. I finally picked the Bible. The same Bible. And told the Lord, yes, I'm going to preach it. And I'm preaching it. Global Baba. It comes with his persecution, but it's part of it. Global Baba. You're even getting some of it. <laughs> Global, <laughs> Global Baba. So, okay, so we can appreciate, we can forgive others who threw their Bibles down. They would also pick it up. They would right? pick it up. They okay. pick it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They threw the Bible. Mm. They didn't throw the word of God. Absolutely. Oh, the, the Bible. They is threw not the, the word Bible of God. down, but they, they didn't, didn't throw, throw the Jesus. word of God down. Because the Bible is not the word, the word of, of God. God. Jesus is. Jesus is the word of God. So the Bible contains information concerning Jesus. Meeting the Bible doesn't save you. It's meeting Jesus. But you need the Bible to point you to Jesus. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, no, Baba. Then the Finally, continent. you know, it's a confession that I've made with um, to you in private. I've made it on air. You know, the only problem I have with following you is that sometimes I just look like a fool. You know, it just no. looks like somebody. You know, I just look like somebody who's never read his Bible, who doesn't understand anything. Feeling like that means you are wise. Ah, foolishness. Only and a wise person will feel like that. Oh, foolishness and wisdom. Yes, a foolish person will think he knows everything. Global Baba, let's begin our global trip. <laughs> On this edition, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. Uh, okay, so South Africa next, and Johannesburg. Hello, my able teacher and soul feeder, Global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina, and the indisputable intercontinental Mr. Michael Bush. Thank you so much, Global Baba, for the amazing work you're doing. You liberate one soul at a time from bondage with real, true spiritual meal. I thank you immensely, Global Baba, for your calling to this end time generation. I've been benefiting from your teaching for uh, the past five years and my spiritual life and views of so many things that used to discomfort me suddenly left me to be, uh, no, to a more, uh, to a better, I should be, a better understanding of the true word of God that includes all temperamental fears I used to get. So much light has been revealed in me due to my constant watching of KLN. May God richly bless you, Global Baba, and protect you from all the never learning or reasonable men. Amen. Amen. Global Baba, there is this church I was attending before I finally stopped because of the lack of proper teaching of the true gospel of Jesus Christ and many extra other questionable things happening in the church. When I am happy, okay, well, I'm happy when I go to church, but when returning, I'm very sad and empty as I'm not spiritually fed well with the true gospel of Christ, then until one of my friends introduced me to your channel, KLN, since then my real true understanding of Jesus came alive in me. My former, former church used to do feet washing, and during one renovation time in the church, the pastor buried four Bibles 
in four corners of the church and many other backyard issues. My question, Global Bar, is washing of feet in Kichif olive oil um, during service, so olive oil service, are they scriptural? I want to beg you, Global Bar, please pray for me because um, I'm used to swearing at anyone who leaves his church. Okay, the pastor is used to swearing at anyone who leaves his church. Also, I sense diabolical means in in all of that. Please pray for God's blessing for my new line of business as Realtor. Please pray for me and my siblings as we lost our mom last month due to sickness that took our life. Now praying to raise money for our burial. It breaks my heart. Please pray for me as I work towards settling down with my wife for God's favor. I can't wait to visit Aquaibum. That's with you because of your best regards. Your spiritual son, Kenneth, writing from Joburg, South Africa. Wow. Kenneth, well, we speak the comfort of the Holy Ghost, the peace of God, and we decree that you are far from oppression. No weapon formed against you prospers. We rebuke fear and the voice of the enemy. You are pr protected, you are secured, you are preserved and established in righteousness. And we decree that your favors to be able to have the monies you need to go through the process of the burial and settling whatever you need to settle. Receive a miracle for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now back to your question on feet washing, mantles and all of that. They are not apostolic traditions. They are not apostolic teachings. And because the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, we stay up with apostolic traditions and apostolic instructions. So that's why the teaching of God's word is much more needed, more than ever before. So don't be afraid. Don't allow doubts arise in your heart. Be confident in the love that God has for you. And be confident that you are secured. Christ said, he will never leave nor forsake you. Bless you. Okay, Global Papa, we're out of South Africa presently. But for the road, as we head to Rwanda next... Let's take this anonymous entry. Dear Dr. Abel Damina, I have a question. After divorce, can we get married again with someone else? And God will bless that marriage because the scripture says that uh, that is committing adultery. Well, uh, I don't know which scripture you're reading, but I think you're not interpreting the scriptures right. Because once they say divorce, it means the marriage is dissolved. It means traditionally or culturally, because marriage is cultural, it is dissolved also legally is dissolved so that marriage is no more existing it's no more in existence and once it's no more in existence you're free to go and get married again you're free to go and get married again to rwanda next and everest writes death from says hello global baba i'm being blessed by your teachings i just needed to report to you that right now i'm listening to your teaching on marriage i just wanted to know that i love you global baba thank you thank he you. loves you yeah. From Rwanda to Zambia, Chandra is my name, Global Baba. I'm 28 years of age. I'm from Zambia and I've been blessed and inspired by your teachings and preaching of the Word of God through your books and social media. We pray for your visitation here in Zambia as soon as you can. Great man of God. I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes last year in August. And since then, I've lost concentration and focus because I've lost weight as well. I'm a youth leader in church and I believe that when you pray for my healing, I'll be free from diabetes because prayer has no distance. Amen. 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 Well, we rebuke diabetes in the name of Jesus. We flush it out of your body. Receive a miracle of healing and restoration now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. To Kenya, and we have two entries. I'll start with the shorter one. Hello, Dr. Damina. Thank you for your great insight into God's word. Please explain Matthew eleven twelve. Peter in Nairobi, Kenya. Right from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. It's actually, uh, you know, the writings in Matthew, were, a lot of them were parables. What Jesus was simply saying is that from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God is open and people are pushing into it. People are coming into the truth. That's all it means. It doesn't mean praying and clapping hands and hitting the floor as violence. It just simply means the kingdom is open and men are pressing into the kingdom of God to get saved. From short Kenya to long Kenya. Praise God, Global Baba. My name is Pastor Michael. I write from Kenya. I recently followed the teaching on being filled with the spirit. And I'm greatly catapulted by this sermon. But the prevalent question, Global Baba, came after you said a person must get his way through and come to Nigeria for the laying of hands for perfect impartation. I want you, Global Baba, to help me because even to have a ticket to come will take many years in saving. And I want to be able to establish and reach many people with the gospel. 
I'm now in my second year in ministry that God has directed me, and I'm not happy with attendance and how people are dragging themselves in catching this message of grace. Since I planted our ministry, we're about 10 in number. Baba, I want you to know that due to listening consistently to you, I found I couldn't flow in the ministry I was before because of the unscriptural sermons of Moses and law. That difference created mayhem between my pastor and me. I did what you instructed other people to do. I went somewhere else and started straight fellowship, and instead of my pastor blessing me, he threw insults and curses at me. Not to mention what he said. Okay, he also asked me not to mention his name for the rest of my life. But God is faithful. After continuing to listen to your message, Global Baba, I got healed and started a ministry to preach the way you taught me and you continue to teach me. Now, help me the way God will help you in everything about ministry and impartation. He continues to go on and on. Uh, well, uh, like I said, you know, we were just teaching on how, how much you must desire impartation. And I said there are times you even have to travel, you know, travel, go to where the person you're learning from is so he can impart into you. All right, so, but that doesn't stop you from doing ministry. That doesn't stop you from listening to the things I teach and growing in knowledge and effectively doing ministry. And then pray for me to come to your country if you're not able to come. You know, pray that all of this corona thing gives way and we'll be able to visit different countries around the world and bring the love of God and we're able to meet you physically and do physical impartations if you're not able to come here. So one way or the other, because you desire it, it will happen one of these days. Amen. From Kenya, quickly, quickly, flying to Togo. Hello, Global Baba. So glad to be enlightened by your teachings. Let the truth triumph and cover the earth. Please, Global Baba, I want to know if there is any training we need to undergo as far as ethics is concerned when doing ministry. For instance, if I want to become a coordinator of Power City Campus in my country, is there any special course I need to take from you in order to know how to organize, behave, and manage the campus? Brother David is in Togo. Yes, Brother David, there's a training for all people who coordinate Power City Campuses around the world. So if you desire to do that, you need to reach out to us. There's quite a lot we're going to teach you and help you understand to make you effective in starting a campus and maintaining the campus. From Lome, you know, one uh, francophone part of Africa, we're going to another. Cameroon, Douala, greetings, Global Baba, the troubler of Israel. Wow. The troubler of Israel. <laughs> That's a new one. And the no-nonsense Mr. Bush. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new okay. one. <laughs> okay, Global Baba, your own was a new one. My own is a good one. <laughs> oh, Global Baba. Okay, I accept greetings from my diligent disciples in the city of Douala in Cameroon. I'm Keith C. Blaze. Global Baba, there is a seeming contradiction in my mind about whether John the Baptizer, it should have been John the Baptist, knew Jesus as the Messiah before baptizing him or whether he didn't know him before baptizing him. This is in accordance with the gospel, according to the accounts, according to Matthew 3, 13 to 17, where John wonders aloud why Jesus comes to him for baptism, whereas he, John, is supposed to be baptized by Jesus. This shows that the first of all, he first of all objects because he knows Jesus before the baptism progress, process. But John 1, 32 to 33 shows that if not of water baptism, John would not have known him, meaning John knew him only after water baptism. Please, trusted Baba, do exegesis here. Well, first of all, the book of John does not give us the chronological accounts. The book of John, John is like a summary. Actually, the first thing John just did was, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God. After all of that, he now went back to see how he can give us a few information. All right? That's why some theologians argue that the book of John should not be a synoptic gospel. Now, but Matthew went, you know, sequentially, giving us the history. And if you observe, what Matthew was saying is that Jesus should have baptized John. Not because John knew that Jesus was the Savior, but they already knew that Jesus, there was something special about Jesus. Remember, the mother of John had the prophecy concerning Jesus. So the mother of John must have told John a lot about Jesus. And then moreover, remember at the age of 12, Jesus was talking with doctors and lawyers. So there was something special about Jesus. He had a lot of education. And, you know, his modus operandi made him stand out among his contemporaries. So when John was saying, you should be the one baptizing me, not me baptizing you, he was referring to the fact that there's something special about you. Even though we're cousins, I know you, but there's something about you. You are more learned than I am. You are more educated than I am because the Bible says he grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and man. So all of those were the reason why John said, you should be the one baptizing me. Not that John knew he was Christ, 
But it was in the baptism when the heavens opened that John's eyes were opened to now know that this is actually the Christ, the son of the living God, the one who takes away the sins of the earth. So it's not a contradiction. It's just the way the two books were written. One was written from the end and then a little bit was added, which was actually a lot of revelation in John. No stories at all. And then the other one went sequentially with all the stories and all the background. It's not a contradiction. It's just understanding that the two books were written differently. From Cameroon, we stay on in Cameroon. I'm Mrs. John Kep, I write from Cameroon Global Bob. I'm so grateful to God for your eye-opening messages. I have a question, sir. After the burial ceremony of a loved one, can a believer organize or attend memorial ceremony or Thanksgiving life celebration some years or months after that person was buried? Yeah, why not? There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. Go and honor the person, honor the family, you know, identify with them if that's how they chose to honor and respect the memory of that person. There's nothing wrong with it. Let's go to Paris, France, and that is in Europe. Says hello, Global Baba and Mr. Bush. I'm Pastor Steve. I write from Paris. I appreciate your work and labor for the Lord, body of Christ. More grace and revelation, knowledge unto the Spirit. My question, Global Baba, where were the disciples of Jesus born again that is baptized with the Spirit? Was it at Pentecost or before Pentecost? And if not at Pentecost, <laughs> when was it? Keep following. <laughs> Keep following the class. Okay, so from uh, Paris, we go to Germany, excuse me, from France, we go to Germany, from Paris, we go to Berlin. Dear Global Baba, any, um, I, I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please kindly help me understand Romans 10, 9 to 10 in these verses. I, if I preach to someone and he or she believed in the message of Christ Jesus, do I have to lead the person to receive Christ as, said in, as we are told in Romans 10, 9 to 10? Thank you, Global Baba. Thank you, Brother Bush. May God continue to strengthen you too. Yours in Christ Jesus, Jeffrey K. Azuma Tangieto in Berlin, Germany. Oh, sure. If you get somebody, you preach to somebody, you receives Christ, let him in the confession. Let him declare his faith and let him be confident in what he has received. Okay. Some anonymous entry, even as we make. Okay. I hear that we have another caller. I'll just go back to that caller. Hello. Hello. Yeah, many, yeah, many thanks for joining us. Where are you calling from? Yes, my name is Chud. I'm coming from all the states. Yeah, shoot on. Okay, please. Uh, my question is, uh, I just want to know, after salvation, is there any necessity for restitution? That's my question. Okay, I understand. No, there's no necessity for restitution. What are you, how, how are you going to study restitution? You know, what are you going to restitute? There are so many things. So, and if you're going to do it, you'll have to do all of it. If there's anybody that should have done restitution, was Apostle Paul. When he was Saul, he went everywhere killing, wasting lives, destroying churches. He should have been the first person to do a restitution. But instead, he explained to you, if any man in Christ is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. So once you're born again, there's no need for restitution. No need whatsoever. No. Okay, Global Baba, we're heading out of uh, Germany. As a matter of fact, out of Europe. We'll be going um, towards Asia. Vietnam is our next port of call. In disguise, we take this anonymous entry. Hello, Dr. Damina and Mr. Michael Bush. Thanks for the teaching. This is my question, Hebrews 6, 4 to 6. I still cannot understand how he, it is talking about salvation. What I understood is that it doesn't make sense that after a certain time in Christ, having tested everything, you start shaking again and we have to teach you again the basics like we have to be mature. I don't understand that. Well, that scripture is, remember the, the people that the writer of Hebrews was addressing, you are, not his, you are not their audience. They were addressing Jewish people, believing Jews and non-believing Jews. That's the audience he was talking to. And he was making them see the futility of the law the vanity of works and making them see that only what Christ has done counts. So that's why it says, seeing that they have crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. And because you know that nobody can crucify Jesus a second time, that means what he was actually saying to them is that when you've tested all of that, you can never follow it. If you read further, he now says, we are persuaded better things of you that accompany salvation. So that's actually the scripture for eternal salvation. Another caller. Hello. 
Hello. Many thanks for joining us. Your name, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Portacos. Your name? I have a question. Your name? My name is Blessing, sir. Go ahead, ma'am. I want to ask, sir. I love to pray, but I lose interest in reading the Word of God. So I need help and insight. Well, uh, it can't work. You can't pray without the Word of God. Prayer without the word of God, if you are not careful, can even take you into spiritism. So the word of God is critical because what are you even going to pray? Prayer is fellowshipping with the word. So my advice, um, I will advise you to get on YouTube, look for our materials on YouTube. Just begin to listen to them one every day, one every day. And I guarantee you in a short while your appetite for the word of God is going to explode. You'll be chewing the word of God and then it will make your prayer very effective and powerful. It's very important. That's my advice. Just go on YouTube, type Abel Damina, and look at all the messages. They are there for free. Just begin to, to consume them as much as you can. It will help you a lot. There are even teachings there on prayer that will help you there. Very important. Bless you. Okay, Global Baba, we're going to some dangerous parts of the world, Vietnam and later Kuwait. Wow. My prayer is that um, time, time does not allow us to live there. I don't want to stay there. I don't want to spend the no, night. We're, we're covered. We're covered. Okay, we're covered. No, okay. we're covered. Okay, and I'm we, going to get out. We should not be afraid. Okay, no, yes. we shouldn't the presence be of okay, okay, okay. So Vietnam. Hello, Riot. My name is Navoma Sunita. I'm a Cameroonian. I, con I currently live in Vietnam. Please, I need your help. I would like to advise you to advise and teach me about the repercussions of breaking covenants with God. Actually, I learned from my place of worship way back in my country and entered into a covenant with God in 2015. Out of there, I broke one. Not once, not twice. I'm confused on what to do, Global Baba. Sometimes I feel I wasn't supposed to get into a covenant in the first place. I feel like <laughs> I didn't do the right things. Yet I don't know what to do next and how it could affect me for playing babies with God. Above all, it makes me feel like I sound too complicated in front of a man who was interested in marrying me. I came across the teachings of Dr. Abel Damina three days ago, and I feel convinced that it could help me with sound ad piece of advice. Please, teacher of the believer's message, grant my humble request. Thank you, sir. What's the name? I know you. Sunita. Sunita, listen carefully. Relax. When you were making that covenant, God didn't take you serious. <laughs> because he knew you were not going to do it. So relax. You're covered. Be at peace. God is not holding it against you. It does not even exist. Just relax. Enjoy Christ. Enjoy what Christ has done for you. And I'd like you to email our office and order for my teaching on the promise of God. The promise of God. It's a teaching series. The promise of God and the integrity of God's word. The promise of God and the integrity of God's word. Sit down with those teachings. They will change your world for you. Bless you. Can we just take a last call on this edition of the program? Hello. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Bush. And good evening, uh, Mr. Baba. Bless Thank you. you for teaching us God's word. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, sir, I want to ask a question. What's the My name? My husband lost his dad, and his dad is a prince. His dad died in America. And while he was still alive, he told them that when he dies, that they shouldn't take him to Nigeria. They shouldn't bring him to Nigeria to bury him. So um, they are planning his burial now, or his family members are trying, are like giving my husband issues. They want to tell him when to bury his dad because they said that because he's a prince, that he cannot bury him any day, that they will tell him when to bury him. And they would also ask him to bring money to do some things back here in Nigeria. So I want to hear what you have to say concerning this. Don't and then secondly, sir, please, I want you to pray for me. I'm believing God for speed. So I, think I want God to um, speed in everything that I'm doing concerning my American visa so that I can go and join my husband in America. Okay, let me just ask you, don't go away, don't go away, don't go away. Was your, was your husband's... Was your husband's father a believer, a Christian? Was he born he again? He was a believer, yes. Was he in any church? Yes, he was Yes, he was in a church 
He was attending a church in America, but when he was in Nigeria, he was a pastor. Okay, so what you'll do is tell your husband to lay us with the church he attended in America and let the church tell those village people that they have taken over the burial because he was a member of their church and he instructed them to bury him in America and that's what they will do. That settles the matter permanently. Okay, um, we, we need to go. I'm on, you know, what, what I feared most has come over me. Um, we're, we're sleeping, sleeping in, in Vietnam. <laughs> you know, Vietnam. No, Papa, we need to go. We yeah. need to go. Yeah. We need to go. Yeah. There, there was a prayer for her. Father, we'll in the name of Jesus, her. we declare that she has speedy favor and speedy performance Amen. with her visa. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. receive it. Amen. We pray for others that are sick, those expecting miracles, those desiring jobs, marital favors. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's this edition of the program. My name is Michael Bush. Enough on this edition. Global Baba. He is Dr. Abel Damina. The Intercontinental, Mr. Bush. What a day. What a blessing. We want to thank all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve all of you the grace of God. I'm excited tonight. Now listen, you have to follow us on radio. I'm on radio tonight, 9 to 10 on Inspiration FM, 10 to 12 on Heritage FM. Tomorrow morning on XL FM, 545. 545 a.m. every day. Good morning, Aquai Bomb. Every day is 545 on XL FM. 545 a.m. And then Radio Aquai Bomb, 11 to 1, XL FM, 1 to 3. You know your FM, 3, three to, to five. 5. And we're back here tomorrow evening, on 6 p.m. on Comfort Good FM. Time. It's going to be an exciting time. We love all of you and thank you for giving us the opportunity to keep serving you. And we will see all of you tomorrow. Enjoy the grace of Christ. Be blessed and good night. Goodbye from Uyo, Nigeria. Amen. Is the will of God that we should be in good health always and be healed of every infirmity if you don't need healing someone around you definitely might need it this is your opportunity and for those sick around you to be connected to the teaching of God's Word for healing don't forget God's Word is God's medicine I prophesy as your amen will come like thunder, you will swim in the miraculous. Power City International presents Harvest of Healing, Miracles, Signs and Wonders, ministering Dr. Abel Daminer. Date, 11th April to 18th April 2021. Time, Monday to Saturday, 6 p.m. daily and on Sunday, first service, 8 a.m. and second service, 11 a.m. GMT plus one and a rebroadcast on the following radio stations. Radio Aquaibom 90.5 FM Uyo 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. XL FM 106.9 Uyo 3 p.m. Unio FM 100.7 Uyo 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo 9 p.m. To 10 p.m. Heritage Radio 104.9 Yo 10 p.m. till midnight daily and also on Kingdom Live Network Station. Also live on Facebook at Abel Damino Public Figure, YouTube Abel Damino Ministries International, Twitter Abel Damino, and Instagram at Abel Damino. Watch real time. Venue 
Power City International, number 98 Wangibo Road, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Host, Drs. Abel and Rachel Daminer.